Hello, my name is Amanda. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, angels and interdimensional beings. And it's really important to me because after having a near-death experience in 2017, which many of you guys know about, and I'll put a link to in the description, I started having experiences with translucent beings from other dimensions that didn't have physical bodies, usually in the dream state, in the meditation state, or in that period of time just when you wake up in the morning or just when you're falling asleep at night when our ego, our personality is kind of going to rest and our awareness is a little bit more peaked to other worlds before fully, fully falling asleep and, uh, and not remembering anything. So I'll start with my first most powerful experience and then get a little bit into a few other topics like um, angels and the spiritual hierarchy based on thousands of years of sacred texts and teachings from mystics as well as understanding the three main forces that are closest to humanity when it comes to the interdimensional realms and how you can discern those things for yourself because I really believe that Although there are a lot of videos and documentaries and teachings from people that you can watch about interactions with interdimensional beings, what's more important than any message that they're bringing through is that you start to A, have discernment on the truth behind those messages and how to do that, as well as start to develop your own connection so that you're not relying on other people and their experiences. So my intention behind making this video is not to uh, just talk about my experiences, what I know and what I know, but to, to support your journey towards more discernment with what you're taking in from media and other people's stories, as well as start to develop your own connection, your own intuition, your own way of recognizing messages from the angelic hierarchy. Okay, so about two years after having a near-death experience, I was living out in nature. I was in my camper van. I had been away from <laughs> cell service and internet and uh, town cities for quite a while. So my body was in a super relaxed state and I feel like this is something that's really important to note when wanting to connect with higher dimensions. We need to be putting our bodies in very relaxed, relaxed states because we want to become more of a match for the vibration and the way of being of those beings in higher dimensions. And if we're very stressed out, that's just not gonna happen easily. Anyway, so I was out in nature and I had been in, um, a very relaxed vibration for a long time and I woke up at 3 in the morning and before I opened my eyes I could hear this really beautiful singing and I could see kind of from my dream the remnants of <laughs> the end of the dream and it was a lot of blue and white translucent light and then I was opening my eyes uh, in my camper van and even though I was awake and I could see my camper van, I could still hear the music in my head. It was a, it sounded like a female voice. It was some of the most beautiful music I'd ever heard. And there was a tall, human looking, but translucent kind of blue and white um, figure that was kind of towering above my head. And she was definitely the one responsible for the music. And it felt as though my camper van was absolutely full of love, tenderness, protection, like 100% care towards me. It was like just the strongest presence of those qualities. It was less about her identity. It was more about what she embodied. It was so obvious what qualities made her up and over the years I have felt her again although I've never seen her the way that I saw her that night but this is how I know that I am connecting with a being that 
is truly of a higher dimension, that's not a trickster, that's not deceptive, that's not trying to use me to bring some sort of message to humanity, but is just made up of pure love. Since that time, I've become very curious about angels, and although there's a lot of people who make videos and talk about this topic, it all seems a little bit chaotic. There didn't seem to be a structure to understanding how the interdimensional beings work. And then later, about two years ago, I came across the work of Rudolf Steiner, Gigi Young, uh, who from there introduced me to some more classical work from Dionysus, uh, which was an apostle of Paul, or a follower of the Apostle Paul, I think, um, as well as uh, just uh, more sound teachings that have been around for thousands of years through different traditions. Um, and through learning these things, it helped me put into place the experiences that I had had that seemed very beautiful, but very sporadic and almost chaotic in nature because they had such a strong feeling and quality that came to them. So there is a hierarchy of angels, a hierarchy of angels. The ones that are closest to us as humans would be the angels or our guardian angel that we all have, that whether we can sense our guardian angel or not, um, we are being led and supported by that angel. Any chance that angel gets to support us. So those angels that we are closest to are in a higher, kind of like a higher frequency, but able to give us their spark of mind if we are receptive and relaxed, able to inspire us to creative acts or loving acts. Um, in the East, it's called manas. Manas is, is the spark of mind that we're given by them. There are lots of ways that they are working with us, our guardian angel, that we might not recognize and connect to the angelic hierarchy. They normally are not appearing the way that we hear in stories or how it only once appeared to me in my camper van. Normally they're working with us in a really subtle way that we don't acknowledge. So when we have really vivid dreams that speak to us or draw up strong emotion when we wake up, often they're using those dreams to spark something in us, to wake up something in us, to teach us something or to support us somehow. Even if the dream itself involved, you know, maybe people from your day-to-day -day life or, or something that seems kind of like mundane, often they're using those dreams to stir up feeling. Um, intuitions that you get, that you follow up on are usually from the angelic hierarchy. Signs in nature, number signs that are repeating that are getting your attention. Um, if you have an urgency to a specific idea, that seems kind of exciting, maybe a little bit nerve wracking, but it's coming from deep inside of you. That can be a spark of mind from your guardian angel. Um, anything that kind of pushes you towards being more of an individual, pushes you more towards your uniqueness, even if it's not something that's like um, super accepted by society. Angels push us towards our individuation. Um, they guide us more towards union with God. So if you feel inspired to go like on a retreat or inspired to take the day off and just be with yourself, go into meditation or prayer or con contemplation, that's coming from your guardian angel. Um, angels try without interfering <laughs> because they're non-interference. They're not here to manipulate us or force us to do anything. They try and inspire us to do things that are going to bring us out of our forgetful state as human beings, out of our amnesic state where we forget that we're daughters and sons of God. They try and inspire us to um, remember bits and pieces of who we really are before we fell so low in this, um, in this dark cycle of time that we will come out of, but they are part of pulling us out and not everybody is catching those remembrances but more and more people will, um, just just with that extra relaxation and openness. Um, sometimes it does involve some kind of terror because ideas and inspirations that come from angels 
aren't always just to feel good. They, they are to get us to a place where we feel good and we're more of ourself. But sometimes the ideas that they bring us can be kind of risky to our ego. They can challenge the way that we have been showing up in the world and call us to make moves that are outside of our normal. And that can cause terror, but it's not the angel wanting to spark terror in us. It's just our ego's reaction to potential change based on those inspirations. Connecting with all of these things on a regular basis is not easy because we live in a very action control dominated world full of, you know, pleasure only impulses. And the angels don't exist in that kind of a reality. They are contemplating the vastness of love in the universe, the the vastness of God. They're in awe. They are in choirs <laughs> in many traditions. Um, and so when we are not contemplating those things, we are going to be much less likely of a match to the vibration that they're in. It's just not going to happen. So as angels are kind of comprehending that infinite dazzling glory and potential in the universe when we are moving into that way of being we will be more of a match for their sparks of mind and and their ideas that they want to bring to us it's that simple we, we just can't be in a non-purified way of being all the time and expect to receive those emanations so i'm not going to get into the details of the angelic hierarchy but it's just good to know that um, the guardian angels and the angels that are closest to humanity would be kind of a level nine in nine layers of angelic hierarchy. So we've got angels, archangels, principalities, powers, virtues, dominions, thrones, cherubim, seraphim, and then from there we've kind of got like the godhead. And it doesn't matter if you're from the east or the west or, or you know where you're coming from. Um, these are all just there are different names and different words for these beings based on you know your culture your spiritual tradition but we're all kind of speaking to the same thing you know um, in the east they use the word devas um, there are different deities and so there is an order to this no matter what country you come from what religion you grew up in it's just that it's seen in kind of a different lens and different words are used, but we're kind of all seeing the same thing. It's just based on the cosmology that we're born with. Humans are the potentially 10th level of the angelic hierarchy. So we are, if we are on a spiritual path, we're developing our angelic human humanness. The more that we disidentify with our attachments and our ego and our lower nature that is more like an animal nature, the more we are identifying with our angelic self. We're developing our light body, our invisible, etheric, and astral layers of our body. When we do our shadow work and we're honest with ourselves, and we can see the dark parts and the repressed parts as well as the light parts, we clean out our invisible body and then we can um, actually activate abilities that we didn't have before like clairsentience and clairaudience and you know premonitions and pro prophetic dreams and things like that but until we are actually doing our shadow work and being really honest with ourselves, we're not going to be clearing out the blocks in that body but the more we move into our, our light body the more we're um, establishing our identity as level 10 in the angelic hierarchy in New Age spirituality, in a lot of the videos and documentaries out there, there are people that are um, sharing a lot of their channelings and their messages from interdimensional beings of many sorts. And it can get kind of confusing, you know, like hearing predictions and prophecies that certain events are going to happen on certain dates. And then, you know, you look back and those dates pass and nothing happened. I think we've all kind of been there. Um, the true angelic hierarchy is not really interested in um, trying to download to people a lot of um, frightening messages, controlling prophecies for dates that the things never happen. That's not really the way that angels work. Angels really value non-interference of human beings. They value inspiration, 
to human beings that can be a match for their way of being. They want us to evolve organically. They want us to um, be given sparks of mind that cause us to make our own artistic creations, our own um, problem solving, you know, become more human than we could possibly be. They're not here to kind of control and manipulate and use humans to just give messages. So when you're seeing these kinds of things in the new age, know that usually um, the people, the humans that are kind of like channeling these messages and, and uh, you know, fear-based ideas, their probably heart is in the right place. But when people are open to the astral realm, without a lot of knowledge of these structures, how, how the spiritual dimensions work, without a lot of purification, and maybe a need for something outside of themselves, um, they can be vulnerable to false light beings. They can be vulnerable to trickster beings in the astral realm that are ultimately here to teach us lessons. So, I would just recommend taking those kind of messages with a grain of salt. Often you'll be able to notice false light teachings by the fact that they have some truth and some empowerment as well as some kind of manipulation, fear, control, or prophecy for certain dates. That's how you notice them. And if they were completely deceptive, nobody would listen to them. <laughs> so they have to use a little bit of truth and a little bit of empowerment and good message, but then there's always something a little bit sticky in there. So as you're developing your discernment, just develop your ability to, to listen to things like that and pick out what's true about this, what's empowering, what's inspirational, what's causing you to evolve as a person and what might be actually some trickster deceptive elements that are part of that message, telling you that that's probably a false light teaching. And this comes into discernment. When you can discern in human life, when you can have a conversation with someone or get to know them, and very quickly you can tell if they're being deceptive or manipulative or they want something from you or they're flattering you if you can kind of feel into those energies with other humans and know kind of like who to trust and who not to trust very quickly then you will have less of a problem discerning spiritual energies if they're coming to you so many people who are very open to the astral world who haven't developed their discernment will get visits from beings that look like angels or look like Jesus or look like Krishna and are very dazzling and very beautiful. And they will feed the ego. They will be flattering. They might be controlling. Um, and people feel very special when they get these kind of messages for humanity, these visits from the astral realm. Um, but if you're able to really discern in real life and very quickly get a feel for people in situations in human life, you'll be really good at discerning things in the invisible world should they visit you. I have had a couple experiences with false light beings in the astral world and at first, at first they appeared visually like, you know, um, ascended masters, uh, deceased religious figures or whatever, very beautiful looking but the feel that was coming off of them was very flat, it was very neutral, and it was almost uncomfortable. The same way that I would feel if some sort of charismatic, dazzling person came in the room in my human life, but something was a little off. And so that's how you tell if you end up in a dream state or a meditation state and you're seeing some kind of being, really how does this being feel? And the angelic visitor that I talked about in my camper van at the beginning of the video, that's what I compare it to now. There's a big contrast. So that angelic being had nothing but love. They were just, he or she, <laughs> I'm not even really sure, was just emanating the qualities of love and support and safety without trying to get me to 
um, be manipulated to share messages or anything like that. And so that's how I now know the difference. And then we can be discerning, more and more discerning in human life when it comes to other humans that we come into contact with. And then we'll be very much ready to be more discerning in the invisible worlds should we come into contact with beings there. So just to wrap up about qualities of the angels in the hierarchy that are clo that is closest to human beings. Um, they are messengers sometimes of love and support of different qualities and emanations that can inspire you and heal you and support you. They protect and guide humans. They sometimes show up visually in critical moments, critical junctures of people's lives. Um, they possess knowledge of the realms of God, the realms of heaven above them that's very majestic and they are able to contemplate um, these higher realities and should we get into a relaxed enough state and a receptive enough state we can start to feel those emanations as well they want to share those with us without becoming intrusive without forcing them on us um, when we do find that we're getting in touch with the angelic realm it's usually in a liminal space in meditation in a dream or just when you're falling asleep or waking up and maybe if you've been deep in nature for a while these are kind of spaces where the ego and the personality is is on hold we're in deep relaxation and if we're uh, focused on our purification we'll be a lot more open um, and so what else I think that's it they don't work through or with machines and technology. So this is really important. In the next years, we're gonna be seeing more and more people um, drawn towards machines, robots, gadgets um, that promise to raise our consciousness, to connect us spiritually, maybe to give us information about time travel and all these kinds of things are gonna be very seductive very dazzling when they come out. They're already coming out. And angels do not require machine technology to advance and support you. You as a organic human being who is evolving um, your light body to move into these next levels of the angelic hierarchy over a long period of time do not require any technological machine to do this. And I would go as far as to say that certain machines and technology, when inserted into the human body, could potentially slow down our organic evolution and plug us into false light realities. Plug us into false light realities because there is a lower astral realm. There is a lower astral realm with um, beings that are not supportive of humanity. Um, and and when we are plugging into that realm, we're kind of displug, d unplugging from the angelic realms. We can't have it both ways. And so I would caution um, for a lot of discernment in these next years as many of these technologies come out and are really pushed, even in the alternative media, even be aware of things being pushed in the alternative media that have big promises to develop your consciousness, but it, it, it has some kind of technological element. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that um, in the future, because this is an initiation. Um, one of my teachers, Gigi Young, she talks about this being an initiation for humans. Like, what are we going to choose? Are we going to choose spiritual revolution inside of ourselves? and the cleaning of our etheric body and the development of our light body so that we are more a match for the angelic hierarchy? Or are we going to rely on devices that are made of metal and machines on the outset of our body because we're not able or willing to take that narrow path of the inner work? So this is coming from Gigi Young's work and it's also in many of the other uh, Western esoteric traditions. Um, we've got angels that are kind of in that where we're headed, where we're going, those higher dimensions. In the lower dimensions, um, we've got the negative entities, demons, dark forces. Um, they are a devolving 
not evolving way of being that are more associated with, um, I would say, the antichrist, anti-life, anti-evolution. And we're more susceptible to those beings when we have unhealed trauma. And so if I have, you know, an unhealed trauma of rejection, for example, if I have an unhealed trauma of rejection, I am going to be more susceptible than other people to attract forces or energies that are kind of on that level, that low vibrating victimization, rejection piece. So the opposite of um, vibrating with the angels, with that relaxation and that self-love. And so that's why we want to do our healing work so that we are not coming into coherence with these lower beings. Um, they exist in their own realm of reality, but it doesn't mean that we need to be um, susceptible to them. It means we just need to recognize them. And if we are dealing with them, it's just a hint that we need to work on our healing in some area. We also have the elementals, the nature spirits, and they can be good or evil. Um, they are in many ways neutral and they just appear also sometimes to some people in the invisible realm. They are called many names across the world, but you can think of them basically as nature spirits or elementals. They are called fairies, gnomes, undines, sylphs, salamanders, jinns, um, many other names, sometimes devas, kind of like the lower kingdom of devas. And um, yeah, there can be some amazing um, nature spirits that can heal us and that can teach us. And so we are going to be more likely to connect with the, the more positively oriented nature beings if that is who we are and kind of where we're at. Basically, you're always going to be connected with forces and spirits around you that are a match for what your vibration and your essence happens to be at the time. Another thing Gigi Young talks a lot about in the teachings on this topic is that we've got those three main vibrations or um, three main qualities of interdimensional beings. We've got the angels, we've got the, um, the lower astral entities, or the nature spirits. Those are kind of like the three things we're working with. There are many, many names for all of these things, and the new age sometimes brings in even new words that make people think that there's some kind of like new um, new type of being <laughs> but really they're just words it's just language but everything is always going to fall into those three things that's just the way that the spiritual worlds are structured and when we're not aware that there is a structure to this we can easily get confused and think that there's some kind of you know new thing that's coming in so when you hear about like lower beings could be demons some people would say negative entities fallen angels reptilian entities serpentine beings um, lower astral parasites there's so many words but just know that there is a lower astral realm that they can't hurt you or harm you and we're only we're only vulnerable to their influence if we have unhealed wounds in a certain area and same with the nature spirits, lots of different words for those, you know, fairies, gnomes, elementals. It's just one thing with many different words, okay? And same with the angelic hierarchy, you know, you're gonna hear devas, uh, angels in um, higher planes, higher realms, the devicon, um, light beings. Basically, we're, all, we're talking about the same thing here. So don't get confused by different words that different teachers are using. It's not like this fully chaotic spectrum of never ending types of beings. We've got kind of three realms that we're working with that are closest to humanity. And so what I think is most important is having this basic structure, this basic knowledge that there is a spiritual world, there is a structure to it, it's not fully chaos. And then instead of having to rely on other human beings to give us inspiration, messages from these realms, why not learn discernment ourselves? Why not take responsibility ourselves? 
why not learn to connect ourselves with the higher beings and become more like the qualities that they have to develop those qualities ourselves so we're not relying on other people because we don't know for sure um, what that information is all about and if it's all true and real. So develop your discernment in day-to-day -day life. Don't gaslight yourself. Don't allow yourself to be gaslit by other people. If you know that you have human beings, people in your life that talk about you behind your back, that gossip about other people right with you, um, if they're giving you backhanded compliments, if they're being passive aggressive, if you can tell that they're jealous, but they're being nice to your face, we need to be really honest about who we're allowing into our life because sometimes if we're lonely and we, we don't want to be by ourselves, we allow so-called friends, family members um, into our lives in a close way that really are not treating us with the type of love that we deserve. We are going to be more susceptible to ideas, teachers, energies that are corrupted, that are only partly true, if we're only allowing partly true people in our own life. You know, we're allowing ourselves to be gaslit actively. So the best way to become very discerning is to be to have a real sword in your personal life and be able to say, you know what, I do have that friend and I know that that friend says things that kind of diminish my success or my ideas and yet for whatever reason I'm still allowing them in my life and I'm being vulnerable with them. I need to be really honest, I need to get really clear on who's close to me and start becoming more and more discerning even if it ends up that you are more alone than you were expecting. And in that way, if you can be discerning with situations and people in your life, you'll be much better when it comes to discerning things in spiritual realms, if and when they come to you. So develop your discernment. How does this person make me feel? How does this situation make me feel? I'm going to be honest with myself, even if that honesty, if the answer is really uncomfortable. So get going with your discernment. And the other thing is um, to connect more and more with your guardian angel, with the level of the angelic hierarchy that is closest, closest to humans. The number one thing to do is get more into your relaxation, get more into nature. You might even be someone who has to physically move out of the city and get, in, get yourself into a place where your body can be in a relaxed state more often of the time. I know that I have to. <laughs> It's absolutely essential for me. Sometimes we have to make sacrifices, um, but they're worth it. So getting yourself into a relaxed state more and more often, meditating, even if it's you know for 10 minutes a day. I think 10 minutes a day is a great minimum. Um, if you're not the greatest meditator, finding some nice classical music and just making yourself comfortable and listening to the music go, sometimes that can put us into a beautiful brainwave state that makes us much more relaxed um, as we learn to become better meditators. And then when we're in that relaxed state more of the time, when we're attuned with nature more of the time, we're going to notice the signs, we're going to notice the synchronicities, we're going to be able to receive those manas, those sparks of mind, of inspiration, of creative ideas, because we have brought ourselves a little bit more into the realm of how angels operate and where they live. We want to go to more where they live so we can meet part way. Because this is your inheritance as a human being. You didn't come here to insert technology into your body. You didn't come here to be bombarded with machines and frequencies that make you tired at the end of the day. That's not what being a human is all about. Being a human is organically evolving with the support of the angelic hierarchy, being honest with ourselves and cleaning out our etheric body so that we can truly ascend without trying to escape Earth, with, without trying to escape with using these situations that we're in on Earth that we're presented with as initiations where we always know where we're going and what we're choosing. So get clear with your discernment and get yourself into a relaxed state of being more and more often. 
so that you are ready to receive these sparks of mind from your guardian angel and the angelic hierarchy. If you like this video, please comment or like and journey well.